Namaste. This practice is about wisdom. So avidya, vidya is the Sanskrit word for wisdom. Uh, Mahavidya, meaning great wisdom, or Dasha Mahavidya means the ten tantric goddesses. They're uh, wisdom goddesses. Their recognition starting in the sixth century marked a shift towards divine love in which the supreme being was considered female. The divine mother manifests as these ten cosmic personalities. Devotion to the Mahavidya goddesses provides opportunities for introspection and ultimately leads to knowledge of the self. When that knowledge is combined with our knowledge of the world, we can integrate both into the wisdom that we need to guide our actions for our benefit and those around us. So we'll begin taking a comfortable seat where you can lift the shoulders up and back and breathe complete breaths. Inhale, increasing your capacity for wisdom, logic, intuition, and truth. Release on the exhale any preconceptions, false assumptions, or superstition. Okay. Jhana mudra. Jhana means knowledge. And we bring the tip of the thumb to the tip of the index finger and Place them face down on the thighs. Jhana Mudra facilitates connection, centering, and grounding. It increases mental clarity and helps reduce the overly active or monkey mind. This powerful circuit is said to grant wisdom and knowledge. It strengthens our vessel and helps contain energy versus draining or leaking out energy. Now we will integrate the knowledge of the mind and body to create the wisdom of the soul. Starting with some spinal movements, let's circle, head and shoulders, in slow circles, take a complete breath for each revolution. That's good. Great. Gradually widening those circles. And then coming to the center to reverse the direction. Beginning small. And slowly increasing size. All right, lift up the arms, press down the sitting bones, lengthen on the inhale, then exhale, lower the left arm and crescent to that side. Take three breaths, lengthening on the inhale, looking up, and then stretching deeper on the exhale. Not, lift, not letting the right sitting bone lift up. Now switch arms, bring the right hand down, stretch up on the inhale, and exhale to the side, keeping the left sitting bone down. Pulsing with the breath. Beautiful, you're great at that. Lower the left hand down. Now lean back, switch the legs. And then start to fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, bow. 
muscles up on the inhale, get spacious and deep and on the exhale, feeling stretch, calm breaths. Last finish breath out. And we're gonna turn on to the stomach, coming down, prone position. For a full prostration to the goddess, divine mother, supreme being, praises to the Maha Shakti, Yadevi Sarva Bhuteshu, Shakti Rupena Sanstiti, Namastase, Namastase. Namastasye Namo Namaha. Now we'll slide the elbows back and palms under the shoulders to curl the chest up into cobra pose. And once in cobra, try a little movement side to side, rocking the hips, turning the heels, looking behind. Keeping it juicy. Good. And push back to table pose. Curl the toes under and spread the fingers. When you're ready, lift the knees to downward dog. Giving your legs some movement, hips movement, shoulders, whatever is needed to complement this stretch through the calves, the hamstrings, the shoulders, walking the knees, circling the hips, whatever feels intuitive to you. And then lower knees and circle the hips. So I make some Nice circles, back on the exhale, forward on the inhale. It may start as small circles, and then if you feel open to enlarging the size. We'll come back to the center, and then start to circle the opposite direction. Enjoy the journey. Experience all the parts of that movement. And come back to your center. Balance on the left knee and stretch the right leg behind, curling the toes under. And then we're just gonna stretch the sole of the foot, the toes moving back and forth with the heel or circling the heel. Loosen up all the toes. And balance on that left knee to lift the right leg up and the left arm up. I mean up here, bird dog. Inhale to lift and extend and exhale to integrate and strengthen the core. Take one more complete breath. And now we'll switch sides, right knee down, and stretch the left leg back, curl the toes under, and begin to loosen up the toes, the arch, the ankle, Good, lift up the left leg, lift up the right arm, and balance using the core to stay steady, and the breath to stay fun. <laughs> Extending and lifting on the inhale, 
and knitting together more integration, strength, and cohesion on the exhale. Wonderful, good. And rest that hand and knee down. And we'll sit back for a little hero pose, Virasana. Sitting to the heels or to a block between the heels. You're gonna roll the shoulders back. Pull the navel in as you exhale and working the strength of the ankles, the toes to stay steady and safe. Inhaling wisdom that you synthesize through this integration of mind and body, the union that we call yoga. Now, let's try lifting up the hips for backbend, camel ustrasana. We look up and press the hips forward. Keep working the inner thighs, squeezing the buttocks and pressing the tops of the feet down. Use a lot of downward force through the tops of the feet to give you stability and confidence. You can do this. You could try and reach down to the heels one at a time. Increasing the downward force through the tops of the feet to keep the hips lifting forward and up. Now come up and lift the arms, lift up out of the lower back, and then rest the hands back down. All right, we have a low a lunge. Step the right foot forward. Move the left knee back. Then press down through the legs, climb hands to the right knee, and take a breath as you center, feeling where this knowledge is coming from. And when you're steady with the breath and the legs, try to lift the arms. Take them a little bit wide at first so you can draw the shoulder blades down and in, and turn the head up. Now press downward through the back foot as you lift the heart and arch back. And lower the hands back to the mat and keep the left hand down. Windmill the right arm up and twist to gaze up to that right hand. And if you wish to deepen that twist, Bind the right hand to the left foot, bending the back knee. That really helps you open the chest. Okay, now switch sides. Go back with the right foot and forward with the left. So left knee above left ankle and then walk the right knee back, press down through the legs, climb up to the front knee, and rest with the breath. Very good. Intensify muscular energy in the core of the pelvis, press down through both legs, lift in the arms. Widen the arms to draw the shoulder blades in and down. Open the heart and look up. Now, extra downward force through the back foot and you can tilt your head back and still feel supported and safe. All right, now bring the hands down. 
right hand stays down, left arm, sweep it up, a revolved lunge. That's fine, doing great. Drawing the shoulder blades down, opening the heart, and some people will like to bend the back knee and bind top hand, left hand to the right foot. It's a real pretzel twist. <laughs> And release that twist. Step back when you're ready. Down, downward dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. You can move around. You can fine tune where your feet and hands are. So they're about hip width apart, shoulder width apart. And the breath is flowing to make the pose more comfortable on the inhale and to stretch a little more on the exhale. All right, we'll lift the right leg up for three-legged dog. Now bend the right knee, tuck it into the chest and pivot towards the left side, sliding the right leg underneath and out to the left side, and we'll open the left arm, stargazing. Next step is to levitate that right foot up off the floor. Okay, okay. step the right foot back, downward dog, and right away we're just going to go on to side plank, turn the heels to the left, balance on the left arm, then lift the right arm up. And if you were lifting that foot on the last one, you can try also on this side, lift the top leg. Good, and lower down, hands, to feet to down dog. Wow, wasn't that fun? <laughs> and we come down, take a rest on the knees. Let's see where we are. Okay, we have uh, a crow or half crow. So walk the hands back, lift the knees up. Okay, so malasana to start. You can just have this much be perfect pose. Try to balance hands in prayer pose. Warren, tuck down a little deeper with the elbows towards the shins and bring hands to the mat for our arm balance, Bakasana. Tip forward with the head until one foot lifts and then both feet lift. Then rest feet down and well, we got the uh, second side here. I think we're coming to uh, downward dog. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> downward dog. Ooh. That's better. Three-legged dog. Lift the left leg up. Bend the left knee. Now tuck the left knee into the chest and pivot on the back foot. Turn the toes to the right. Slide that left leg out to the right side and spiral open in the chest. You can try to lift that left foot up, levitate there. <laughs> and step the left foot back to down dog. And right away, turn the heels to the right, balance on the right arm, side plank, where the left arm lifts up. Try that much, good. Then try to lift the top leg. Good, that's it, that's great. Wonderful. Ooh. <laughs> I'm coming down, down to down dog. And then 
right down to child's pose. We did a lot. Time to rest. Let your body breathe completely. Fill the lungs on the inhale. And on the exhale, lengthen the arms. Empty the belly. Pulsing up and down as you breathe. All right. We will come up to stand. Walk up to the hands. Stand right up. Take a drink if you're thirsty. And take a wide stance for star pose. And lift up the arms, spread the fingers like you are a star that's shining so brightly. Your beams will spread out to every corner of the universe. Good. Next, goddess pose. Bend the knees, turn the toes out. So when you squat down, the knees are bending towards the toes. Have chin mudra. Or jhana mudra, <laughs> same. Going a little deeper on the exhale, keeping the shoulders back. Two more. Strong goddess energy. Last breath. Good. And straighten the knees. Rest and relax. Ooh, from goddess, we'll just square the feet so they're parallel. And slide forward, folding over the hips. Soften the knees until the hands are pressing on the floor or on a set of blocks. The inhale, lengthen the neck and spine. And then on the exhale, press down through the feet, lift up through the belly. Relaxing the knees, shoulders on the inhale, and then straightening the legs and arms on the exhale. Walk the hands over to the right foot, bend the right knee, lift the heel, and squat down on that side. Then bring the right arm inside the knee, lift the left arm and twist to look up on this side. Okay, then lower the left hand, shift the hips to the other side. Bend the left knee. So we could modify by having the left elbow on the left knee and look up as you twist. We'll go a little deeper, squatting down on the heel. Perfect. And rest, hands down, hips up. Inhale, straight legs, and exhale, fold. Last time, head to the mat. Okay. From here, walk up to the front of the mat. And collect yourself with the breath. And open to this knowledge of the body and the mind. Joining together, weaving together. And step the right foot back for warrior one. Bend the left knee. And 
Make sure to really ground through the back heel. When your feet are sta stable, lift up the arms. And draw the shoulder blades down, lift the eyes up, and press through the feet to lift the chest. Good. Take another full breath. And then lower the arms and clasp them behind for humble warrior. Fold forward over that left hip. You can try and lift the knuckles up towards this, the sky or just keep them on the back. <laughs> Now release the hands to the floor and then on the exhale try and straighten the left knee into triangle so both knees are straight. Soften on the inhale, roll the shoulders back and then lengthen on the exhale, tightening the tummy. Make sure that back heel is really well grounded because we're going to twist, lift the left arm, open the chest, and look up to the left hand, revolve triangle. Beautiful, good job. Lower the left hand and inhale, step right foot forward. And exhale, left foot back, preparing for a warrior on this side, keeping the back heel down, climb up to the front knee, and eventually raising up the arms. Good. Listen to the body. Be aware of where your consciousness is. Being present at this moment to understand all this knowledge. All right, lower the arms, clasp them behind, and then fold over the right hip. Maybe you're lifting the arms up or just keeping them on the back so the shoulders stay back. All right, lower the hands down for pyramid, Parshvottanasana, and gradually straighten the front knee. Pulsing, soften on the inhale and strengthen on the exhale. Being more self-aware with the inhalation of how you're holding your body and how you're breathing. And a little more dedicated and devoted on the exhale, bowing deeper. And keep the left hand down now as we revolve, open the right arm and look up. Find the shoulder blades down into the back. A little softness in the right wrist and the right elbow so that right shoulder can stay safe. And rest hands down and we'll step the left foot forward on the inhale, lengthen the spine and on the exhale fold over the hips, Uttanasana. Bring the feet together, bend the knees, squat down for chair pose, Utkatasana. Okay, back here. 
Inhale, lengthen, eyes up, and exhale, strengthen, hips down. Testing your limits on the exhale to see how deep you can go. Good. Stand up on the inhale. Rest the arms, exhaling. Are we okay? Need water? <laughs> we'll try balance now on the... Um, Balance on the left leg, bend the knee and cross the right ankle over that left knee. You can hold it there with the hands. You can bring it up higher into half lotus. But just keep sinking the hips down like you were with your chair pose. One-legged chair. Wow, you're awesome. Rest the right foot down, stretch the arms up. Yay, we did it. And rest the arms. But we have one more side. <laughs> so balance on the right leg, bend the right knee, and then carefully cross that left ankle over the right knee. Bring it up wherever you can keep it steady. Continue to breathe as you go deeper in the hips. The shoulders stay back. Eyes focused at one spot in front of you. Your drishti. Good. And rest. Feet down. Arms up. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold forward, coming down to sit with wide legs. Then scoot forward so you're on the front of the sitting bones. The ankles are flexed and the muscles are engaged, hugging to the bone. Drawing the lower back in, either by pressing the fingertips behind and rolling the shoulders back, or pressing down through the backs of the legs to keep the length. Inhale, lengthen up, and exhale, fold forward. So the hands just stay under the shoulders so they don't tense up the neck and shoulders by overreaching. And just tiptoe fingers forward a little on the exhale if you need to go deeper. Inhale, rising enough to be aware of what your body is telling you. And then use that knowledge become wiser in your practice so you can continue to do your hatha practice at any age. Now, lifting up part way, walk the hands over to the left leg Keep the left hand down, spiral the chest up, and open the right arm, lifting back behind you. A little bit of leverage against the inner leg with the left elbow helps with that opening of the chest. Good. Bring it to the second side, walk the hands over to the right leg. And keep the right hand down, the right elbow inside the knee, and open the left arm. So you're looking up and keeping that left shoulder back. Good, good, that's it. Now, 
push the chest up, draw the lower back in. Take another deep breath, spread the fingers, get wide on the inhale and lower down on the exhale. Good. Now, lift up the knees. Ardha Matsyandrasana, the half lord of the fish. And slide the right heel underneath the left and hug the left knee into the chest. And try and balance evenly on both sitting bones. And you're going to twist to the left, wrapping the le arm, right arm, around the left knee. Inhale, getting taller. And exhale, pulling the navel in to twist there from the core. Very good. Perfect. Now, switch legs. Turn to the front, lift the right knee, and then slide the left heel underneath, back towards the right buttocks. And we'll lift up the chest, hug the right knee in, and begin to twist, hooking the left elbow around the knee, and looking to the right. But you can vary that, your head can move, find the optimal position. Good, release that side, and then extend the legs forward, Paschimottanasana. Flex the ankles and press the heels down, pulling them back underneath you. So this helps lift the lower back in and up. And if that's not happening, use a little bit of height to sit on until your lower back has the natural lumbar curve there, anterior. Then tone the muscles that you're stretching, hug muscles to the bone, working those quads, calves, shin muscles, and reach up, inhaling, lengthen the spine, and exhaling, fold forward, just keeping the hands close under the shoulders, Rising on the inhale as needed, and then folding on the exhale as you tighten the tummy. Bow down, humbly respecting these incarnations of the divine as the goddess, the ten wisdom goddesses, Dasha Mahavidya. And then rest, lifting up, inhale to a straight back. And let's let ourselves recline for bridge pose. So laying on the back, lift up the knees. And walk the heels in towards the buttocks. Tuck the shoulder blades under and press the elbows down, starting to lift the sides of the hips up while maintaining that muscular contraction to the midline through the thighs, the inner edges of the feet pressing into the mat equally as the outer edges. And the hands may be supporting underneath the buttocks or clasping together. And if necessary, walk the heels in even again so the hips can rise to their maximum. And the chest can lift and open. Inhale, lifting like a big balloon floating up to the sky. And exhaling, staying strong in the buttocks, the back, and the calves. Two more breaths. And then the last breath. 
and lower down, relaxing, resting, letting go of tension. Let the knees open apart and the soles of the feet touch, leaving as much space as you need between the heels and the sitting bones so that the thighs can open comfortably. Inhale spaciousness into that area of the pelvis, hips, and thighs. And if you have hands on the thighs, you can press a little bit on the exhale. See how that feels, but relax that pressure for the inhalation so the body isn't fighting against it, but working with it. Assisting on the exhale and relaxing on the inhale. So there's no strain, but just a little encouragement. Now press the knees together and hug the knees into the chest. Apanasana. Letting the arms lengthen on the inhale and hugging, squeezing, tightening on the exhale. If you like to rock the hips up, you can do that, taking the legs up and over the head into a plow pose. Get a little momentum there and rock them up. Press down with the back of the head if you're in plow and lift up through the knees and thighs to straighten the legs. Then release plow into happy baby. Bend the knees towards the armpits. Hold the ankles or the feet. And then pull down with the shoulders while the feet resist up into the hands. Slowly turn the head from side to side like a wise old owl. And if your inner child wants to play, let your body rock side to side, circle, whatever is intuitive and pleasurable to help your body feel satisfied. Good. And I'm going to stretch out on the mat, arms overhead, legs wide apart, and spread the fingers, spread the toes, and stretch long through the whole back, the legs and the arms, moving, stretching, circling the wrists and ankles, turning the head or sticking out the tongue. So all those muscles have one more delicious stretch before we let them rest in Shavasana, bringing the arms down by your side and tucking the shoulder blades underneath the back so the palms are face up and the feet are about hip distance apart. And I'm gonna dim the lights for your eyes here. Giving that rest. Okay. And one more back here. And now it's time to relax and rest in this peaceful moment. Thanking your body for all the effort you put into this practice. 
and now giving it permission to settle into the mat more comfortably and more deeply and rest any tension in the mouth or jaw the eyes sink a little deeper and the shoulders surrender a little more of their burden and the arms rest even more deeply into the mat and the hands and fingers let go of any uh, thing they're grasping onto and the chest and back soften melt and trustfully surrender to the mat the floor is holding you safe and secure and just allow that floor to hold you so you don't have to hold yourself and your hips and abdomen can relax and your legs knees and ankles relaxing the feet and the toes even the soles of the feet softening and letting go of their work now it's over it's done you're finished you're entitled to this rest and relaxation you've earned this pleasurable time of rest and recuperation you need this time to integrate the wisdom the knowledge of the mind and the body becoming the wisdom of the soul from Dr. David Frawley's book about the uh, wisdom goddesses. He says that the goddesses represent what is hidden, secret, subtle, and sensitive, and what has to be searched out and discovered. As the word, she represents both the teaching and its comprehension. She is thus the inner guiding power. The goddess represents what is to be known, what we are drawn by an inner fascination to, to discover. She is the mystery and the allure of the higher knowledge which causes us to lose interest in what the mind can know in the realm of the senses. The goddess takes us beyond the realm of the known and the domain of space-time into the secrets of eternity, infinite, infinity. The goddess is not only knowledge, but power and delight. Knowledge of her reveals her powers, which are awesome and transformative. Understanding of her reveals her bliss, which is the joy of going beyond all the limitations of the body and mind. Yet the goddess does not merely give us knowledge. She is the knowledge. The inner knowledge is the body of the goddess, which she unfolds as her various adornments and eventually as her own being. Wisdom is the ultimate form of beauty and delight, the most sought after, beloved object in creation, and hence the ultimate embodiment of the divine feminine. Ultimately, the goddess is not merely knowledge, but pure consciousness itself. She bestows the capacity to cognize an underlying unity 
essence in all being. She is the knowledge that puts the mind to rest and returns us to the source. Through her we discover the serenity of the self. Hindu deities represent the divine consciousness functioning on all levels of the universe, both outwardly and inwardly. They have a broad range of meaning, form and formless, concrete and abstract, human and non-human, terrible and beautiful. They appear on every level of our being and of the world being as the various principles, energies, and faculties which make up this great universe, manifest and unmanifest. The goddess who represents creation on all levels possess this same diversity, which is expressed through her ten wisdom forms, the Dasha Mahavidya, and their different functions. Dasha Mahavidya means ten great knowledges, they reveal the inner workings of both the universe and the psyche once the veil of appearances is pulled down. They represent the deeper truths of life hidden behind our attachment to the outer form of things. Their messages are sometimes inspiring and sometimes frightening because they represent life itself, but they are always instructive to those who are looking for something beyond the ordinary realm. Each of the ten forms of the goddess represents a particular approach to self-realization, to knowledge of that within us, which transcends time and transient identity. Yet each of the ten has within itself many layers. Unless we are willing to look deeply, we may have become caught in a secondary aspect of the form or function of the goddess. As the representatives of powerful cosmic forces, the goddesses can be approached to gain health, wealth, fame, or other ordinary goals of life. However, if we approach them with a selfish intention, their inner powers cannot come forth. We cannot manipulate those deep cosmic forces. We can only benefit from them if we honor the wisdom of their origin. Hence, these knowledge forms should not be approached superficially or casually. For them to really work, we must first surrender to the Divine Mother herself and gain her grace. It is her power, her Yoga Shakti, that does the work. We can be receptive to its current and learn its rhythms, but we cannot direct its flow. We must not try to use these teachings out of personal willfulness or they will not be liberating for us. Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Shakti Rupena Sanstiti Namastasi 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 Namo Namaha Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Chetana Rupena Simstiti Namastasye 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 Namo Namaha All praise to the great goddess Mahashakti. Now start to deepen your breath and awaken muscles to move 
stretch. And eventually roll over to that side. Awaken the mind and eventually sit up once you're ready in a comfortable position. It always gives me great joy to be with you. I bow to that goddess energy in each of you. Namaste.